one-third of your brain's cortex is engaged in vision. When you simply open your eyes and look about this room, billions of neurons and trillions of synapses spring into action. Now, this might be a bit surprising. To the extent that we think about vision, most of us think of it as like a camera that just takes a picture of a world that would exist whether or not we looked at it. And it's a bit surprising then that we use a third of our highest processing power to do vision. Now, there is a part of vision that's like a camera. The eye has a lens which focuses an image on the back of the eye where there are 120 million photoreceptors. So it is like a camera there, but the signal from the eye then goes to the visual cortex of the brain where billions of neurons and trillions of synapses then spring into action processing the image from the eye. So the question is why? What is all of this about? Why do we need one-third of our highest processing power to do vision? Well, cognitive neuroscientists have been studying this and they've concluded over the last three or four decades that your visual brain is a reality engine. In real time, you're constructing all the shapes, colors, and depths that you see. You open your eyes, it looks like you're seeing reality as it is, but in fact, you're seeing the reality that you create on the fly in a fraction of a second. That seems very strange, so I'll just give you a couple examples to demonstrate this. In this example, I've shown you some red disks with bits cut out. If I rotate them, all of a sudden, your visual system creates a 3D cube with glowing edges. Now, the glowing edges are entirely constructed by your visual system. There's no glow. And the screen is flat, but you still see it as a three-dimensional cube popping out of the screen. So here's a case where you construct the lines that you see and you construct the 3D cube that you perceive. In this example, you see some blue bars with sharp edges moving across the screen. But in fact, there are no bars, there are no edges, and nothing is moving. All I'm doing is I have a static image of dots, black dots and blue dots. And I'm from frame to frame, I just change the color of some of the dots from black to blue, and other dots from blue to black. Your visual system does all the rest of the work. You create the bars, you paint them with blue, you give them sharp edges, and you make them move. You're constructing what you see in real time. Now, most of us think, well, maybe we're constructing, but what's going on is that we're reconstructing the true state of the world outside of us. So if I have an experience as of a red apple, I'm sorry, a red tomato, then I might believe that there in fact is a red tomato in front of me, even if I weren't looking. So the idea is that many cognitive neuroscientists think we're reconstructing reality, not just constructing it, but reconstructing uh, a match to the existing reality. Now, why might they think that? Why would they think that we reconstruct reality? Well, the standard argument that's given is an evolutionary argument. Um, the idea is that those of our ancestors who saw more accurately had a competitive advantage compared to those who saw less accurately and thus were more likely to pass on their genes that coded for the more accurate perceptions. After thousands of generations of this, we can be quite confident that we're the offspring of those who saw more accurately. And so we can rely on our senses to tell us the truth about the world around us. That's the argument. So, in short, the idea is that accurate perceptions are fitter perceptions. Well, is this correct? Is this the way evolution really works? Well, let's look first at a couple examples uh, of real biology. So, the jewel beetle is dimpled, glossy, and brown. The female is flightless. The males fly around looking, of course, for eligible females. When, an, when a, he finds one, he alights and mates. Now, there's another species in the outback of Western Australia, where these beetles live, Homo sapiens. And the males of this species like full beer bottles, 
and they don't really like empty beer bottles, and they throw them empty bottles into the outback. Now, it turns out that these bottles are dimpled, glossy, and just the right shade of brown to tickle the fancy of these beetles. The males swarm the, beetle, the bottles, trying to mate, and the species almost went extinct. The females were not interesting anymore. The, the males actually almost, they would die on the bottles. So here's a case where the, the, the males had, for thousands of years, successfully found females. You would think they saw truth. But no, they had a little trick. A female is anything dimpled, glossy, and brown. The bigger, the better. <laughs> you might say, beetles, sure. They have small brains, but not mammals. I won't go into this too long, but you get the idea. Okay, moving right along. <laughs> so does natural selection really favor seeing reality as it is? It turns out, this is a technical question that we don't need to wave our hands. Evolution is a mathematically precise theory. There are equations for evolutionary game theory and so forth. So we can actually test, and I have. And the key notion is fitness. What fitness does a steak convey to various organisms? Well, for a hungry lion looking to eat, a steak conveys a lot of fitness. For the same lion full and wanting to mate, the steak does nothing. And for a rabbit in any state, the steak conveys no fitness. So fitness depends on reality, yes, but also on the organism, its state, and the action. So, I and my students have run evolutionary games where we actually have organ in millions of, of worlds um, with different kinds of resources and organisms that see all of reality, some that see none of reality, but are just tuned to fitness. And the bottom line is, is this. Perception of reality goes extinct. In, in game after game, and we now have a theorem, the last two months we've proved a theorem, organisms that see the truth go extinct when they compete with organisms that see none of reality as it is and are just tuned to fitness. So, how can we think about perception? If perception is not telling us reality as it is, how can it be useful? Think of it as like the desktop on your, on your computer. Suppose you're writing a, a, a paper, a, a text file, and the icon for that is blue, rectangular, and in the lower right corner of your screen. Does that mean that the text file itself in your computer is blue, rectangular, and in the lower right corner of your computer? Of course not. Anybody who thought that doesn't understand the point of the desktop interface. It's not there to resemble the inside of the computer. It's there to hide the computer. You don't want to know about the diodes and resistors and all the megabytes of software. If you had to know all that com complex reality, you would never finish writing your file or editing your photo. So the purpose of perception is to hide the truth and give you simple eye candy that lets you do what you need to survive. You might say, well, if you think that train coming down the track is just an icon of your interface, why don't you step in front of it? When you're gone and your theory with you, we'll know that there's more to the train than just an icon. And I wouldn't step in front of the train for the same reason I wouldn't drag that icon to the trash can carelessly. Not because I take the icon literally. The file is not literally blue and rectangular. But I do take it seriously. If I drag that icon to the trash can, I could lose a year of work. So evolution has given us symbols, perceptions, that we must take seriously to stay alive. But that does not mean that we have to take them literally. So, we used to think, and we typically think, that perception is a window on reality as it is. But the theory of evolution tells us that that's not the case. Um, evolution says that perception is not a window on reality as it is. Instead, we should think of our perceptual systems as giving us a, a species-specific desktop interface. Space and time, as we perceive them in this room, are the desktop. Physical objects are the icons on the desktop. Space and time and physical objects are our species-specific adaptation. They're not there to show us the truth. They're there to keep us alive and, and to have kids. In short, perception is not about seeing truth. 
It's about having kids. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you.